So today we're going to talk about supraglottic airway devices. So supraglottic means they are sitting above the glottis or in other words they're sitting in hyperpharynx. So we need to go through the anatomy first. So I have a little mannequin here which explains clearly the upper airway anatomy of uh, the human airway system. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about the human upper airway anatomy. So we can see that this is the floor of the mouth. Uh, you can see the lower um, row of teeth. And this is the tongue. And when you go down here, you can see there's a small gap or a small sac-like structure or small, um, and that structure we call it as uh, a vallecula or it's also called as a spit bag. Uh, under your uh, upper airway anatomy and if I go further down I can see what I'll see is the the, the epiglottis so the epiglottis mainly act as a seal preventing food or other foreign body going into your upper airway further down you have your glottic opening where is your vocal cord and posteriorly you can see that this is the the esophagus or the foot pipe um, where we of course where the food goes in um, and this structure is the arytenoid cartilage okay now these structures are quite important in case of um, inserting an LMA so I'll just repeat again so the tongue just below the tongue you have a small sac or the spit the spit structure so that what we call it as a vallecula then you have the epiglottis then underneath you have the glottis opening which you can see it's a small V uh, which is your vocal cord as well and below that posteriorly you can see the esophagus and this structure is the arytenoid cartilage which is uh, which can affect when you're putting an LMA in. So how the LMA goes into your upper airway anatomy so it's, you can slide in and it goes and makes a seal onto the the glottis. So this is how an LMA uh, is inserted or how it should be sitting. So it goes all the way down and it makes a seal over the glottis. The major challenge that you might have is when, you, when it comes and hits this arytenoid cartilage. So that's why we tend to fo follow the upper airway anatomy and make sure that the mask is completely sealing the glottis. So I'm going to talk about the second generation supraglottic airway device uh, other than the classic LMA. So this is the eye gel. Um, eye gel, uh, the key features are it doesn't have a cuff um, and it is called just thermoplastic elastomer, they call it. It's just basically a gel which absorbs uh, the patient's intrinsic body temperature and it molds itself uh, as per the anatomy. Very easy to insert. You don't have to worry about the cuff pressure because we don't doesn't have an inflatable cuff and also you can put give oxygenation uh, so we're going to talk more about the anatomy of the eye gel now okay i'm going to talk about the parts of eye gel so the eye gel as i explained earlier it doesn't have a cuff it absorbs human body temperature and it get molds itself uh, by using the intrinsic th temperature of the patient it has few parts to remember so this is uh, the connection where you can put the ambu bag um, or your bag valve and mask you have this structure here where you can attach oxygen so people think that this might be putting in a nasogastric it's not it is to connect oxygen and to give oxygenation passively while you're putting this eye gel in if I look on the superior aspect here, there is a small tiny hole here and that's where you put the nasogastric tube. The eye gel has got its own nasogastric tube selection um, and it does come with, uh, with the packet. If you look down here, this is the bite block. This is where the patient's uh, incisors, upper and lower incisors should correspond. If it is the right size, the teeth level should be on this line over there. And coming further down, so this is the mask. And if you look here, you can see that there is a, a curved 
channel here that's the gastric channel so when we put the nasogastric tube through here the the nasogastric or the oral in, in this case it's orogastric so the orogastric tube comes through this gastric channel um, and the oxygen and other gases can come out through this um, cuff so basically it's a uh, it's a cuff go and sits on the upper airway and gives all the oxygen whereas through the tip it gives a bit of a protection from um, esophageal aspirate as well now there is a structure called as the, epig um, the epiglottis rest so that is this structure so this is the epiglottis epiglottis rest where it prevents epiglottis folding over to the cuff this is a new innovation which the other supraglottic devices don't have where it prevents the folding up of the epiglottis so so to read back so this is where the ambu bag goes this is for passive oxygenation this is where the nasogast orogastric tube sorry orogastric tube goes through that's the bite block and it corresponds to the incisors on this line and if we go further down there is a channel here which is the gastric channel and you have the cuff which goes into the the glottic opening so i'm going to demonstrate how to insert an eye gel so before inserting an eye gel make sure that you have a good patent airway good pre-oxygenation given to your patient so we all so we tend to give um, high flow oxygenation with a nasal prong so i have my patient on high flow oxygenation uh, with 15 liters of nasal prong so that we can do a bit of apneic uh, when, um, insertion while we are putting the eye gel so that's been done assuming that's done and always position the patient so it's always head tilt and chin lift if there are no contraindications if not if there is a contraindication for head tilt and chin lift and do a jaw thrust so let's assume that this patient has no contraindications for head tilt and chin lift so I'm, um, I'm opening the airway so ideally it has to be the sniffing the morning air post position and we are following the upper airway anatomy so it's got a curve which corresponds to the upper airway anatomy and the cuff should be cup should be following or cup should be facing the patient's lungs so hold it by the bite block do a head tilt and chin lift and the cuff go and hits be behind the upper incisors and holding the bite block you just insert it insert it until you don't feel any give or you don't you start to feel lots of resistance so i'm feeling some resistance now and i put my ambu back um, and I make sure that I've got good air entry bilaterally so I can see there is good air entry um, and then what I can do is I put a, a connector uh, to an ambu bag and I'll just bag the patient so when I'm bagging the patient I'll also make sure that I've got good air entry uh, bilaterally uh, good air entry on the upper airway good air entry on the mid axillary line and make sure that I'm not doing much of gastric in insufflation once the eye gel is positioned you can tie it so it's got its own uh, proprietary um, a tie which comes along in the packet so it just basically have to feed through be behind the patient's neck it just put it onto the, um, the specific uh, structure which just comes along with this eye gel so that it stays in there um, and you give 10 to 12 breaths if they are not in cardiac arrest um, and then you can connect to a ventilator um, and you can start oxygenating your patient uh, that's eye gel for you you can also use um, um, entitled CO2 to make sure that there is good uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange make sure there's good ventilation and also to make sure that um, um, we are oxygenating the patient really well that's ideal for you